Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This week I'm finally covering the development of Newcastle Helix. Newcastle Helix is located to the west of Newcastle city centre. It's adjacent to St James's Park. This 19 acre site was the home of Newcastle Brown Ale and Newcastle and Scottish breweries for a number of years. But after they left this site in 2004, the site lay vacant. The new joint owners would attempt to redesign the urban environment of Newcastle and make it a positive change. The original Time Brewery was built on Bath Lane in 1870. This was built by the Time Brewing Company. So this shows sort of how long ago the origins of this brewery was on this site. It was said to be actually the largest brewery in the north of England. Following this, the brewery continued to grow in size before becoming amalgamated with four other local breweries. In 1927, Newcastle Brown Ale was launched. Newcastle Brown. Would the North East really be as tranquil without it? And in 1928, the famous Blue Star logo was created. Each star of the Newcastle Brown Ale logo was set to represent one of the five breweries that amalgamated to form Newcastle Breweries. Newcastle Breweries later then merged with Scottish Breweries in 1960, forming Scottish and Newcastle Breweries. Scottish and Newcastle slowly pulled out of the Newcastle city centre site with bottling of brown ale moving across the river actually to Dunstan in Gateshead. Scottish and Newcastle eventually sold the land to a partnership between Newcastle City Council and some other stakeholders. This was done in 2004. The deal meant that 14.4 acres of the site was therefore owned by Newcastle City Council, One North East and Newcastle Uni. The focus of the redevelopment would be around a science city. This was to enhance the region's growing reputation for pioneering scientific research and as a key location for knowledge-based businesses. The term Science City was the overall name of the site for a number of years, and this actually originates from Gordon Brown while he was the Chancellor of the Exchequer. He designated six English cities as Science Cities, and Newcastle was named one of these in 2004. However, this announcement of Science Cities actually came with no funding and no real establishment of how to get these built or anything. To get these projects off the ground would take a considerable amount of investment from sort of local and private partnerships. The other science cities were Birmingham, Bristol, Manchester, Nottingham and York. Collectively these formed the National Science Cities Development Group with a focus on developing and promoting the science cities and sort of share their experience throughout this. The focus of science city development in Newcastle was around four science themes. These themes you can later see in sort of the buildings that eventually got developed. These were ageing and health, energy and environment, molecular engineering and stem cell, and regenerative medicine. The original press announcement for Science City state of this development, located close to the main shopping area in Newcastle, this will be a place for the community to frequent with residential housing, office space, dining and cafeteria areas, and attractive public spaces, open to people to walk through for lunch and in the evenings, and in doing so, they'll be adjacent to and able to see people working in scientific laboratories, incubators and small businesses. In total, and including the private sector investment, Science City represented a £700 million investment in the site. The proposal was scheduled to start on site in 2011 or 2012. Through this public-private partnership, the development of an outline planning application, infrastructure and investment plan, and a site-wide energy master plan was formed. A number of other strategic interim uses in partnership with stakeholders such as Newcastle College and Newcastle Gateshead Initiative were formed. Another interesting part of the uh, story is the involvement of One North East. One North East was a former regional development agency for North East England. This was formed in 1999 and received government aid for regeneration. This was actually later abolished in 2012 just as they're about to start on site. However, in 2016, Legal and General, a large pension fund, invested 350 million into the scheme. So one of the key parts of this overall development of the site was trying to create a sort of a sustainable location. And that can be seen through the whole energy requirements, all these buildings is, is provided by a district energy center. These are quite common in sort of really sustainable cities in Europe such as Copenhagen had them, 
and advice on district heating and cooling. So Newcastle has one of these now in terms of the Helix Energy Centre, which means all these buildings in this vicinity of the Helix site are hooked up to this energy centre, which provides the heating and cooling. Another key part of the site source sustainability is the lack of sort of roads through the site. It's a very people friendly space that's been designed. And apart from Bath Lane, the rest of the site is very people focused. So now I'm gonna talk through some of the buildings on the site as this sort of helps provide the explanation of what actually is Helix. The first thing you'd see if you're entering the site from St. James's Boulevard is the core. So this is a, this is a five floor grade A office accommodation, home to a rich mix of knowledge-based re and research-led businesses. The core sustainability feature of this building is to the rear of it, it has a green wall which runs for the full height of it. Following on from this, if you head up the site, you'd come to the Catalyst. This is one of the more striking buildings on the site, which features this black facade with sort of crisscrossing gold trims around it, which is a real striking appearance in this location. This is home to the National Innovation Centre for Aging and the National Innovation Centre for Data. These are furnished grade A office space to rent, and this features a 180 seat TED style lecture theatre. The next part of the site is the Newcastle University owned section of the site. Whilst the ownership isn't broken down that minutely into who owns which bit in the public knowledge, the Newcastle Uni has sort of a cluster in this corner. Located next to the student accommodation, they have the Frederick Douglass Centre. This is a state-of-the-art conferencing and teaching facility, a 750 seat and a 200 seat lecture theatre and a range of seminar rooms and exhibition spaces. Following on from this, Newcastle University also have the Urban Sciences Building. This is a building as a lab and home to Newcastle Uni's world leading research and teaching. The core sustainability feature of this building is it has over 4,000 sensors and can tell you really insane facts about what's sort of going on with oxygen levels in a room, the heating and cooling the building and the temperatures. This is sort of to provide a sort of insight to the urban management and building management. These three buildings are all set around one of the three squares located in Helix, which feature numerous amounts of sea planting and vegetation and very high level design, which is very, it's probably the highest quality urban design in Newcastle. Following on from this, you get to the biosphere. This is a 90,000 square foot high quality biology and chemistry laboratories also featuring grade A office space. This offers uh, space for life sciences uh, to establish and grow. And this building really uh, fits the description of original Helix's purpose of being able to walk around and see into side laboratories and small businesses as to the rear of this building. These large glass windows, which are full height and you can almost see entirely into the building, backs onto the next public square. And as I said, there's a district energy center that providing 10 megawatts of heating five megawatts of cooling. Other major core component of this whole scheme is office space. So Newcastle actually quite lacks modern grade A office space. And there's not actually that many grade A office space buildings with sort of modern floor plates from the city center. Of this, there are two developments. There's the Spark, which is currently under construction. And this provides 110,000 square foot of grade A office space over 12 floors. And there's also the Lumen, which provides 106,000 square foot of grade A office space over large floor plates. The top floor has balconies, and this really shows what office space should be providing. The city really sets the standard for that. To the rear of the site, they're proposing really high quality sustainable housing that's going to be designed in a way to adapt to aging. So rather than having to people having to downsize properties or move to different accommodation as they get older, the buildings are designed to be sort of interchangeable where walls can be moved and rooms can be rearranged in a way that can support people living there for a lot longer. So as you can see the site is all trying to push boundaries of housing, office space and sort of urban sciences and um, university education within the city and this all borders on to further student accommodation, the Newcastle Business School and other key development sites which are coming forward now which include two residential schemes uh, one on St James's Boulevard and one on Heber Street. There's also the only remaining landmark of Newcastle breweries is the former uh, offices for the site, which is the only thing to not get demolished. These now form the Sandman Hotel, and it's nice to see that one part of the site was actually retained, as 
As much as this scheme is really impressive and really sets the standards, urban development projects are being sort of developed, designed around people and designed around sustainability. It is a shame to lose the entire history of Newcastle Brown Ale within Newcastle from the site it was originally brewed at, just being completely gone from the city. And I feel the adaptive reuse of these buildings, originally used as a brewery, could have been a bit more sustainable way than completely knocking down and rebuilding because no matter how sustainable you rebuild, the act of destroying buildings is always worse and like building new ones is always worse than um, using what you already have. And I think that's something that's going to become a lot more prevalent in the future of demolishing sites to clear them and start brand new isn't really the most sustainable option and they should really focus on reusing the existing buildings and adapting them. This is a real positive project to see happening in Newcastle and it's great to see that about half the site is really up and running at the minute and sort of coming up and further buildings such as Spark and Illumina are about to get let soon and are in construction. But of course there's any development happening they do feature a multi-story car park. They're calling the garage and they're trying to um, make this a more sustainable multi-story car park. In the end results to having an, a large number of electric chargers, a green wall. Although one of the positive features they do feature a cycle hub at ground floor which I, I guess plays off a little bit and does support cycling here. What, what the cycle hub will provide I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it'll be secure cycle parking or more of a repairs and servicing shop. 